Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about high yield CT facts and let's start by some basic numbers. In terms of CTDI, you should know that an average of 30 milligrays for a head CT and a 10 milligrays for body CT and that's an average for absorbed dose. For effective dose it is different and it's actually higher for the body CT based on the organs that we're irradiating. The calculation for CTDI depends on 15 consecutive slices but it also takes into account the radiation that occurs as scatter radiation at the two edges of the x-ray beam. They're also called the two tails of the x-ray beam in which they have scatter radiation. The CT dose for a single slice does not take into account that extra radiation therefore the CTDI tends to be a little bit higher. Don't be distracted by the calculation of 15 slices because that doesn't change the dose that we're calculating which is based on concentration. Moving towards spatial resolution the a small field of view such as in a head CT has enough pixel values or pixels and we know that that's not going to be our limiting factor. Our limiting factor can be our focal spot, our geometry, our actual detector size and the different reconstruction algorithms. For low contrast discrimination in CT it is really affected by CT noise and we should know that CT is known for its contrast resolution, not for its spatial resolution. So it is really important for us to know what changes CT noise and low contrast resolution in our CT. Houndsful units, as you might know, they're based in the measurements of water and air. We normalize water to represent a value of zero Houndsful units and air represents a value of minus 1,000. 1% contrast difference is equivalent to 10 Houndsville units and that's just a fact that you should know. So every time you see a 10 or 20 difference in Houndsville units, you know you're dealing with 1 or 2% contrast difference. So that's pretty remarkable right there. CT noise, like I said, is perhaps the most important concept to know in CT is that it's affected by slice thickness, pixel size, radiation dose, and patient size. In general, everything that prevents my photons from getting to my detector will affect my CT noise or signal to noise ratio. If I have a bigger pixel or a or, or bigger voxel itself, I have more photons in that image that they add up and they help my low contrast discrimination. By the same token, that can also cause problems with volume averaging and my spatial resolution, but because sometimes we really want to make sure we are getting good noise, we might have, or, or low noise, we might have thicker slices for that purpose when we do reconstruction. So even though we can get very thin slices, sometimes we really do reconstructions a little bit thicker because we get a better signal to noise ratio. Slip rings allowed us to create helical CTs because we removed the need or eliminated the need of some of the wiring that was required before. The spatial resolution for CT is from 0.6 to 1 line pairs per millimeter and this is really low when we compare it to other modalities in radiology, but it shows you that the real importance of CT is in contrast resolution. Scanners are able to visualize 0.5% difference in contrast between two objects. And this part here should probably be in red. What happens when we increase KVPs, but we're keeping the MAS constant? Well, we produce less noise because we have more x-rays 
reaching the detector. However, our contrast is in theory degraded because we have more penetrating x-ray and the patient does receive a larger radiation dose. When we increase MAS but we keep the KVP constant, we produce better low contrast discrimination and less CT noise. Notice that I use I use the low contrast discrimination term rather than low contrast resolution. They sound very similar but there are some differences. In theory only my KVP is affecting my contrast while my low contrast discrimination is improved because by increasing my MAS I reduce noise and what this means is that maybe the contrast is already there in the image but if I have too much noise I won't be able to see it. By the same token if I decrease the noise I improve my low contrast discrimination. So it's low contrast and it's there but by removing the noise I'm better able to discriminate between two objects with low contrast. A scout which is the initial image that we take for before we prepare for a CT examination is about 10% the dose of an axial image. For high yield facts I wanted to mention that an increase from 120 to 140 kvp will only change about 5% of the Hounsfield values. There will be a 5% difference from the two studies and the two main points from this uh, fact is that my Hounsfield unit values are dependent upon my KVPs and the second point is that although they're dependent upon KVPs a change in KVP does not really signify a very big change in Hounsfield units. The CTDI for a baby is going to be about three times higher than that of an adult and this is a reminder that when we scan a baby or a younger patient we need to make sure that we adjust the settings for that pediatric patient and that way we avoid giving unnecessary radiation dose to this patient because it will be three times higher if we don't. The estimated biological risk of cancer for an individual who received radiation as a fetus will be around 3,000 in 1 million and that's based on some estimates and different coefficients and depending on what source you, you use you'll find different estimates and different models for risk estimation. Well, thank you very much guys. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll keep adding some more videos for you. Number by the length of the scan because the length is going to be directly proportional to our patient's dose. So we multiply that times the length and we're going to get what's known